Over the course of this video, you're gonna watch me turn this unscrupulous mess of uncolored boxes into a mostly playable game. The game, by the way, is Berry Picker. It's on Steam. There's also a demo, which is free. If you're interested in checking that out, I'll leave a link to that down below. Not in my house. It, the box, the little square, the description. That's what it's called. Now let's set the scene. It's December 1st, and oh boy, Christmas, just a week away. But that wasn't important. No, 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 no. What was important was the idea that hit me just as I was about to fall asleep. Because God forbid it happened at any of the other 16 hours that I'm awake throughout the day. I rolled out of bed, and I scribbled down the idea. Now when you start making a game, everywhere, and I mean everywhere, will tell you to start with a game design document, which is basically just a large set of guidelines as to how you want to make your game. Normally, people make it online. I am not normal. I did it all on paper. All of my ideas, everything that I wanted to make for this game, all of the game direction, all of the sound design, everything, that I could possibly have put in a game design document online, I put on paper. Why? I actually don't know. I like paper more. I didn't think that one through. The gameplay. I needed to make the game fun. Now I know what you're thinking. Obviously the game needs to be fun. But is it obvious? Is it? With that in mind, I decided to make something that goes like this. <gasps> Plant make berry. You click plant. Plant throw berry. Berry fall down. Click button on machine. Machine make bottle from berry. And just like in real life, bottle gets launched from cannon. I don't really know where I was going with that last part. I think I really just wanted to add a cannon into the game. The art. It looked perfect pretty much from the beginning. Nah, I'm just kidding. Like any normal artist does. I loaded up Blender, rendered 3D models, added shaders to the 3D models, used Grease Pencil to add line art to the 3D models, added further detail and shading into the 3D models, and upload them all as PNGs. I way overcomplicated that. But at least it looks cool. Now it's time for the fun part. The code. It started as Unreadable Spaghetti, and by god it ended as Unreadable Spaghetti. But it's my Unreadable Spaghetti. I found that looking at code can be quite boring, so to simplify this process, I have made a flowchart with pictures. The berry bush, which basically just has an area to click, and a container, which is really an array, to hold all the berries that spawn. The berries themselves don't do all too much other than pick a random force, pick a random direction, and apply that to an impulse function, which then creates a trajectory for each unique berry. Finally awake. Which is really just a fancy way of saying when the berries need to, they will launch themselves in a downward arc. The wine bottles also function the same way, except there's a little bit of random spin to make it look like bottles have some kind of weight. Now out of all of the code that I wrote for this game, I think the one that I'm the most proud of is perhaps the upgrade system. Basically the way that it works is there's four containers that hold data. One for the current level of the upgrade, one for the maximum level of the upgrade, one for the cost of the upgrade, and one for how much the upgrade needs to scale by in terms of cost. And basically the way that the upgrade system works is when you push a button to upgrade something, a signal is sent, a function reads what the signal is, it will change whatever information it needs to change inside of those containers, and then it will apply the upgrade. And I think that was the last system I kind of had a solid grasp of how it was supposed to work because the one that comes after that is the save system. Now, I don't think the save system is supposed to have been difficult, but I have a real talent for making things more difficult than they should be. Now, if I had a nickel for every time the save feature produced a bug, I would have about 47 and a half nickels. 
the half a nickel was because it was something completely unrelated to the save function, but I still want to blame it because it's made me incredibly angry at it. And I still don't think it works properly. So I made it work good enough, and I just forgot about it. All that's really left now in terms of technical stuff is the sound. I have a very methodical and well thought out approach to sound design. What are we left with? You've probably seen some clips throughout the video of a cannon being used. Yeah, I had to scrap that whole idea, it just felt redundant to me. So I basically took it out back and gave it the old yeller treatment. Also, I added gnomes as an auto clicker kind of feature. And they come in different colors. But with all that in mind, I don't think Berry Picker turned out too bad, considering it's my first game I'm fully releasing on Steam. I think the next games that I do afterwards should hopefully, mm, fingers crossed, be better. But I have a good baseline to work off of now. Still wish there was a cannon, though.